All right, we've got another case that's been submitted, and this one has come from, <coughs> excuse me, from an attendee of the Serona user training. So this person is uh, new to uh, Conbeam and implant virtual implant planning. So um, we want to take a look at everything. So when we get these particular uh, scans in for evaluation. Um, we go through a few more processes and steps because there's typically a few more things that need to be done. So this patient is missing. So this patient is missing tooth number 30, and we'd like to place an implant there. Uh, the implant plan has come to me uh, with the implant in place, with the sleeve in place, with the nerve mapped out, which is fantastic. Uh, my next question would be, what type of guide are we going to place here? And uh, being a stickler about workflow and patient visits, uh, my question would be that this is an ideal case for an OptiGuide. Um, why don't we go ahead and have the CEREC data in? One, we will need it to order the guide. So if our patient says yes now, we're going to have to bring the patient back in if we don't already have um, if we don't already have the CEREC data in. Uh, and two, by having a virtual wax up or virtual CEREC wax up in there, we're able to better plan uh, the location of our implant. So um, I, I'm just a stickler about the workflow, so I want us to continue to keep that in mind. Um, but um, keep planning, that's how we get better. So let's take a closer look at this. Uh, this is an OptiGuide case, a potential OptiGuide case. And uh, let's take a look at site number 30. So this place case has been planned for a Nobel BioCare uh, active uh, internal 5x10 millimeter implant. So if we think back to our checklist uh, that we discuss in training, um, let's evaluate our case uh, through the checklist. Mesio distally, what we're looking at, we're relatively well centered. Uh, we're plenty far away from the roots, so we're good there. A buccal lingually. We're relatively well centered. Obviously, we have a lingual concavity there. I don't like this implant being this close uh, right here to the lingual plate and also um, being so engaged in the cortical plate right there. But uh, again, generally speaking, we're relatively well centered. Uh, there's some tweaking that could be done there um, just from experience. I know that um, bone level. Uh, if we take a closer look at this, and here we go with the drawing, um, what I look at here is I see bone level to be about right there, just like so, and our implant is placed right here. So we have all of this space right here where we're below the bone level. Now I'm an advocate of slightly subcrestal placement, uh, but this is probably a bit much in this particular case. So I would want to go ahead and move that up to at least right there because if we move it up if we move it up much more now we may have some of the implants showing although if we idealize the position a little bit that may not be there so but I could accept that as our placement versus our original position so to give you an idea of where we are there we are before with the your plan and here we are where I would think of more putting the bone level position a uh, number uh, the next on our list will be vital structures, and uh, the biggest vital structure we have in the mouth uh, happened to be in this particular area, the nerve, which we can see we have plenty of distance to the nerve and the lingual concavity. And here, this is definitively uh, a little close for my comfort, so I would consider moving this implant forward to avoid that lingual concavity or tipping it forward like so to avoid that lingual concavity. Uh, but I'm going to undo that because I, right now I just want to go through each little step. Uh, after this, we will take a look at our occlusal table, and our occlusal table will go to the axial view here, and we will take a look at the axial view so that we see our adjacent teeth. So what I would like to do here is um, just kind of look, you know, I, I like to always look from this visual perspective. Now again, we don't know you don't necessarily have to do all of these drawings on the screen. Number one, it's not easy to do, but I like to be able to look from this perspective. Like to be able to draw where I want. So based on this, this is where we want the head of the implant coming. So right now our plan is too lingual and slightly too distal. Hopefully that makes sense. 
and then the next thing that we'll look at is our occlusal plane and again here we can see that our occlusal plane sorry here we can see our occlusal plane goes like so so we know that's not an ideal scenario so what I like to do first is go ahead and work on the occlusal um, table and to fix that I need to move this to the buckle okay and uh, also working on the occlusal plane I know that I need to flatten this out so I'm gonna have to over exaggerate that now you notice how as I tilted that implant now we starting to have a better occlusal plane so it needs to be almost like that if not a little bit more even now as we do this obviously <coughs> excuse me we can see that we're getting too distal in fact we're hitting the Jason teeth and then this is where I would bodily move the implant over just like so okay so there we go now as we move different things we have to come back and now I'm going to recenter that into the ridge and as I so let me do that again so we can see here obviously this implant is not well placed because we've made some significant changes there I will go ahead and bring it back into the bony ridge there in doing so that moved it to the lingual and to correct that lingualization I will tilt the implant kind of like that so now we have a much better position but the negative in our position is we've created a situation where due to bone resorption we've got a little bit of the implant showing so then I can I have the space to go to a longer implant if I would like it's not necessarily important here I think a 10 millimeter implant is more than adequate enough so just like so okay <laughs> So now we have a better implant placement here. So this is a more ideal placement that we can see here. Um, if we go through to the original plan, we can definitively see how different this looks, especially in this tangential view and the cross-sectional view compared to my more idealized plan. Um, so here we can see the difference. Again, look at the upper jaw here. Another thing I like to point out is uh, one other view I like to look at is just the jaw in general. You know, how does this implant look in comparison to the adjacent teeth there versus there? So when you look at it from there, you can see that this implant is quite a bit tilted in that direction, whereas mine looks like it more belongs in coming up and down there. And then also looking what I call down the line, we can see that the implant, the axis is tilted as the lower molar would naturally be tilted there so there we go so this case to be done is relatively straightforward case in terms of placement it does require a little bit of grafting here on a few threads uh, that grafting depending on, on the comfort level can be done prior to implant placement or if you're comfortable uh, can be done at the time of implant placement uh, thank you for submitting the case hopefully this is helpful and I appreciate uh, everything <laughs>